questions for Josh and Dennis. Um, much of what you talked about is uh, obviously relevant, important, detailed procedural practices, technology usage, and so forth and so forth. Does this, does this consulting report get into the organization in terms of its, its I hate the words because they're so overused and I'm harking back to a conversation with Neil, into the culture of the place, the tone at the top, the, uh, the, the sort of vibrant connection between how we run our business and safety and concern for the customer. Aside from the procedural stuff, which is part of that, but it has to do with how you lead, how you manage, how you plan, how you speak, how you all of that. If you can understand that question, you're going to make great progress here. <laughs> uh, I, I would say no, that this uh, CanJ was really tasked to look at those which um, those things which can actually be uh, seen and measured uh, and that what you're talking about more of that cultural look is really more what this group is looking at, uh, this task force. Um, CanJ has looked at specific uh, you know, procedures, training materials and uh, their next phase will look at in a, uh, technology that we've already placed on our buses. They'll look at um, some of the uh, stops within the street. Uh, they're not really looking more closely at, uh, actually it's really more broadly, at some of that cultural stuff. Thank you. Sure. I have a question. Uh, it's nice to be as to say the general topic is safety. Has the issue of the mental stability of drivers been acknowledged? I mean, is there an outlet for drivers to go there Co-workers I have talked to sometimes have had issues. Is there anyone they can go to to resolve that issue? Because a mind of clarity, and as they deal with problems, as I say, also includes safety on the road. Because if employees have issues with outside problems, they cannot function properly on the road with all those lives in their hands. Mm -hmm. So is there some type of uh, program or committee or someone that drivers can go to? to, for, like I said, problems? You're talking about personal problems or problems they have at work? Both. Well, TriMet does have a, a police assistance program. You're aware of that, right? So you're looking at something more than that? Yes. Some drivers are reluctant to discuss issues that are really bothering, you know, really bothering mm -hmm. So I was, as I say, to, I'm asking, is there a program can be more implemented where uh, employees will open up? This, uh, okay, I have a couple thoughts on that. Um, first, we do have, uh, in, in recent years, we have switched to a new provider of that employee assistance program, we call the EAP, uh, and we've tried but could probably do better to get the message out to employees, to help them understand just what type of um, support they can get through that program. Uh, it, is, um, it is support that it, you, you have confidentiality. It's the kind of support where you can call and at no cost to you um, get mental health counseling. You can get, uh, given the times and the stress of many things going on in the economy, you're able to get financial uh, advice and some of the housing and uh, type of uh, counseling that someone might need given those type of stresses and circumstances. Uh, they will also provide assistance in um, interpersonal struggles that you might be having either at home or also at, in the workplace. So they might be able to provide uh, mediation um, and some type of, of, of resolution to uh, any issues you might be having with either colleagues or family members or people outside. It is, uh, it is a one number that you call to get really any number of pieces of support through a menu. Uh, and we try to encourage employees to do that. And uh, like I said, I think we could do more. The second thing I'd say is that uh, TriMet has been trying to implement and really embrace this uh, philosophy called employee support. And that is to be, um, rather than it's management versus frontline employee, and when you just do something wrong, we whack you across uh, the, you know, the hand with the stick, but rather we try and 
uh, work with you and understand the totality of your performance so that we can hopefully uh, identify challenges early and give you support such that you don't actually get into trouble. Uh, an example of that might be we look very closely at how operators, uh, at the number of complaints they receive from the public. And we know that much, as Tom said, safety is a leading indicator of the performance of an organization. Uh, an employee's customer feedback profile is a leading indicator of many other things. So if we see all of a sudden a significant spike in the number of customer calls pertaining to erratic driving, um, you know, uh, behavior things, uh, that might indicate that there's something going on in that employee's life that we could, uh, that we need to try and help them with, rather than, and we want to identify that early before it becomes something that can't be corrected. And then we might proactively try to provide them with the support of that EAP provider. My third comment is, uh, having said everything, there may be many ways that our employees want and need more support uh, and information, and we're going to have a session specific with this task force to collecting feedback from our employees, and that'll be on August 25th, and we're trying to do some specific outreach to our employees to let them know to come to that session and talk to this group about what their thoughts may be. Um, actually, I have a, a couple of comments again, um, uh, regarding the uh, lighting signals. Boy, if you had included um, getting pedestrian intervals and bus and rail preemption, you would have basically done an entire uh, meeting that we had publicly with uh, uh, Peter Kuntz at the uh, City of Portland to their um, signals person. Um, because and one thing that came up from um, uh, a couple of people who um, were at the, the, the open forum, um, concurrent signals is, is a huge one because the number one um, safety issue for pedestrians, you know, uh, across the region is failure to yield to a pedestrian um, in an intersection. Um, uh, and so, so that's great. Um, I would really love to talk more about that in the work session. And, and another uh, comment I just had, and it's, um, kind of my, my, my mission in life it has become so in the last year um, in reading the, the uh, document which uh, is available I believe on TriMet's uh, website so if anyone has um, would like to download it it's, it's uh, downloadable on the website so for future fora um, you can come with those documents um, uh, pre-read so uh, the word accident use of the word accident in, uh, uh, through a process that is, is looking to um, increase safety. And I guess I would, I would really, I would really love to see TriMet be basically the first, <laughs> the first agency that, um, that I know of that has, as its style guide, um, embraced the word uh, like crash or collision rather than accident. Um, in a way that, that invests in a solution and recognizes that um, some incidents are preventable and that we're here to prevent those incidents. And so um, using using the word crash rather than accident, I would, would make my view. So this is something <laughs> that so much that we might think about relative to that person 
in that chair, how they're selected, how they're assisted, how they're trained, how they're managed, how they're uh, disciplined. Uh, to me, that's just a, an enormous part of this whole thing. Um, and it, it, I don't mean that in any vindictive way. It's got to be positive support to make them effective because that's what they're there for. Uh, and I don't know where all that takes us, <laughs> but it's a part of the discussion. I think we need to get our teeth into Tom here as we get into this. Thing. And I give that a very high priority. I mean, we can we can talk a lot about buses and technology and traffic and potholes, but none of them have a brain and can do what she can do. I've seen her do what she does. It's pretty impressive. And she has echo work with them. They actually stuck us in the bus and turned the engine on and drove around in circles. And I think the insurance rates went up substantially for 24 hours. Uh, but it gave us a real appreciation of what it takes to do what these people do. So I guess I recommend the operator has at least one of the whole Absolutely, and surely in my experience, you touched on something which is utterly critical and is at the um, absolute base of this. And I used to sum it up um, in the world of construction as a choice between if you do it wrong, I will catch you, and I expect and will help you to do it right. And it's an attitude that um, management starts with, but it becomes pervasive throughout the organization. And the former of those, if you do it wrong, I will catch you, absolutely will not work. It, I think you can train dogs that way. I don't think you can train human beings. And conversely, the, uh, I expect you to do it right, and I will help you. In fact, does work. Uh, it's not mushy. It's not easy, um, but it keeps improving. And you talked about the number of organizations you've worked with. That they may be described it differently. Uh, you, you manage the quality in, you don't manage the mistakes out, or something like that. Um, while I'm on that, a uh, second point, and Josh reminds me of this a couple of times. Um, the core fundamental thing I learned in construction about safety came out of uh, the Peter Keewitt Sons organization, one of the world's largest um, heavy construction firms that actually done work for TriMet. And the core of uh, the Keewitt view on safety um, is you can control the incident, you can't control the consequences. And an example of that, uh, we all know what utility knives are. And every individual on a construction site has got a utility knife um, in their tool belt. Uh, and it doesn't take a lot of training or a lot of education uh, how to teach somebody to use a utility knife safely. Um, and that is the, um, that's the beginning of the incident. And where Keywood goes with that example is, Someone who fails to use the utility knife uh, safely, if working in an environment with three or four others, slips, nicks his finger or her finger, uh, you take him to the first aid station, um, and the consequences were absolutely minimal. Uh, an entirely different set of circumstances, uh, a different worker, same activity with the utility knife, working alone, uh, deep down in a shaft, doesn't use the utility knife safely, slips, doesn't nick their finger, nicks their wrist. Uh, and by the time uh, they are discovered four hours later is missing, um, they're no longer with us. So you can control the incident, you can't control the consequences. Uh, and as a uh, threshold uh, ethic, if you will, it's been my experience that that's where you begin to make the Absolutely the greatest headway on, on safety.